Hi guys, this is Lada from astrolada.com and today I'm here with one of my teachers, the much respected Ruman Kolev, who is known all over the world by all serious astrologer. As, uh, he, he's known as a Babylonian, sidereal astrologer, ancient Hellenical astrologer, all the ancient astrologers Ruman Kolev has revived them basically, has translated missing texts from Latin, from ancient Greeks, from uh, also Akkadian as well, as far as I remember, that you know that you are self-taught all those languages and translated all those texts. And he has revived the use as, of um, uh, the, print, the um, uh, primary yeah. directions as well, <laughs> which were not used for a few hundred years and they were the most correct for predicting the future to the month. Uh, and so we have here an astrology celebrity, an astrology genius, I'll call him. He's a teacher of my teacher, Tsitimira Borisova, of Trifon Nikolov, who, whom you know from my channel, of Krasia Tasio, who you also know from my channel. And one of the biggest names of astrology, go to his lectures in Bulgaria <laughs> or order his books because... This is, you know, the voice of um, long forgotten and much fuller astrological lore, which we have lost and which is being revived now. Hello, Ruman. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for being here with us. Ruman is currently in Seattle and he graciously agreed to give classes to the Astrolada audience and I'm going to be part of those classes because I want to learn ancient Babylonian astrology. You see how Trifon Nikolov has been predicting every month so correctly almost to the date world events using the system of Ruman Nikolov. It's not his system but it's the Roman system. Yeah. <laughs> yes and and we're going to make a webinar. Actually, Ruman is making a webinar. which is going to be around five, six hours in October. I think the day is on the 15th, on Saturday. Of 14th, October. 14th. 14th, yes. But do check the details below because it might change. Uh, it's only going to be $60, guys. And this is a six-hour webinar. Usually such webinars cost $200. And they, it's going to be so comprehensive. It's going to cover so many topics. Check the link. And can you tell us a little bit about the webinar? And this is, it's called Ancient Astrology 101. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, actually, mm, I hope that this seminar, webinar, will be very condensed material. And uh, I think about it like uh, introduction, comprehensive, condensed introduction to ancient astrology like where where does this all start where where did it start when who was the first guy to receive this knowledge how this happened um actually and also why what is the purpose of ancient astrology um in the in the eyes of the ancient astrologers right and uh okay we will talk about the sumerian astrology and even before sumer because i think astrology comes before sumer and sumer started around they think that let's say like four five thousand bc so seven thousand years so yeah you know, i i think i know the exact time when the Sumer the sumerian civilization uh started it uh it started in 5500 bc so it is uh from now, it is 7,500 years ago. This is when, it, when the uh, Sumerian civilization started. Mm -hmm. And this is very, very important uh, period of time. You know, five th we will talk about this in, in the uh, um, webinar because 5,500 BC turns out to be a very very uh, important time when a lot of changes happen 
That's when the deluge was, the big flood, isn't it? This is one. This is one of the things, but many, many other other things happen. The kind of it's the the culture of Sumer was actually brought from outside, from another region. And yes, yes, like five thousand five hundred BC uh, is the time when was built the first Sumerian temple in Eridu. The archaeologists have have found have found the first Sumerian tem temple, five thousand five five hundred uh, BC. Uh, so we will talk about this. We will talk about uh, the the culture, the culture in which astrology thrived in Sumer, and uh, this. Uh, this will involve that we will talk about uh, their religion, their gods. Their that corresponds to the planets, don't they? Each god is a different planet. <laughs> Actually, every god, every goddess is uh, also on, on the sky. It's like a celestial every, body. Yeah. Every god or, or goddess in uh, Mesopotamia, they uh, they are the powers of the universe. They are the principles, different different principles of the universe. They are the principles on which the world is built upon. These deities, these divinities, you know. Uh, okay. Some people think that they were extraterrestrials, right? Yeah. Okay. I have nothing against this hypothesis. Maybe, maybe there were extraterrestrials going to Mesopotamia at some time in, in uh, history. But uh, the gods and goddesses of Mesopotamia, they are principles principles of the cosmos mm -hmm. and they observed them they connected them to different bodies celestial bodies that to different constellations different planets different stars different times of the year different sections of the zodiac every divinity had his or her correspondences to a number of things, to many, many, many. Yeah, things. just like Venus had the planet Venus had a few goddesses for her, depending on what phase Venus is in. Oh, oh, yeah. I think we should make a separate webinar only for Venus because this is this is an amazing topic. Actually, actually, yeah, we can we can do it very, very soon. Actually, mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, we'll see. But what uh, else? So the first part of the webinar is basically the mythology and the history, where it, 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 it all happened. The history, the, the religion, the belief set system. The second part of the webinar is about, I have here, I think in front of me. Uh, here it is. Second part is uh, the coordinate systems. The second part, we're talking about the different zodiacs they were using. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the in the first part, though, we'll say also things about omina, about the omens in Mesopotamia. Uh, when uh, when was the first evidence of of these omens and uh, their their structure um, and also, we will talk about Enuma, Anu, Enlil, which is in, in Mesopotamia. This was the reference book or the reference Bible of the astrologer. Uh -huh. Now, when, when, when something happened in the sky, the Babylonian astrologer looked in Enuma, Anu, Enlil, what, what, what this means. This was his first 
point of reference, the most these, important. These are three paths that the stars can take, on which of those paths the star is, basically. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, we, I, I have not included this in the, in the uh, topics, but we may talk about this too, about the different parts of the, of the horizon. They, there are three, there are three parts. We can, we can talk about this briefly, but um, you see this, this webinar uh, has so many topics that we, we will give the big picture. Mm -hmm. the big picture. That's a 101, yeah, introduction. 101, the big picture. We will talk also about uh, history of astrology, how this, con this concept, how this system, which originated in pre-diluvial Sumeria, which is before 5500 BC, actually I have very strong evidence about this, that astrology originated on 5,500 BC or even before that. Yeah. But I can see uh, from the documents, from the texts, from the cuneiform tablets, I can see straight to 5,500 BC. Wow. And uh, uh, what was before that, um, then I'm not sure what exactly was before that, but I can imagine, I can um, restore, even before 5500 BC, I can restore from my knowledge of the Mesopotamian culture. Mm -hmm. I believe that in 5500 BC, there were very big changes. There was a flood, and actually, this was the beginning of the new golden era. 5500 BC was the beginning of a new golden era. What was what was before that? I think uh, if we believe the cycle of Mesopotamian culture. Before that, maybe there was a civilization of, uh, uh, of the darkness. Yeah, and uh, this civilization was um, killed off, annihilated, finished, finished off by the act of God. Maybe they it, became so, like Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> Probably much, much worse, you know, I have, I have uh, read some uh, texts, ancient texts from ancient writers about what this civilization looked like, and uh, it is worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. They, these ancient writers, they talk that in these dark times, people uh, were cannibals, they ate other people. Wow, and uh, there and and uh, they were um, physically physically they were deformed, not only psychologically. Yes, but, monsters. But also physically, and they and, and they were full only of hatred and greed, uh, and uh, magic. <laughs> everything bad, you know, everything bad. Wow, so they were. In my in my vision, uh, it seems like I see them breeding a certain kind of humans, only to eat them. The way like now, people breed chicken and sheep. In these dark times, these deformed humans, these human monsters, bred another type of humans, which was so, uh, which was soft, softer, smaller and more and more looking like us, and they bred them only to eat them. That's horrible, oh my God. <laughs> there, were, there were constant constant wars and, and plagues, and uh, there was no a word for God. Nobody knew, nobody had an idea what God was. 
in this uh, dark time. It's a bit like the Noi, uh, who uh, the the deluge that got sent because everyone was so in the Bible the story of the deluge because everyone yeah was yeah so, I believe story yeah I believe this comes from from there. But look, this is uh, one of the teachings of Mesopotamia, the teaching of the cycle, and according to them, each each cycle starts with a golden period. Starts at the top and goes down. Yes. Each cycle starts with a golden period. God sends a prophet. God chooses somebody and gives him all the knowledge to convey to the other human beings. So, uh, with this, a new golden era starts. So, progressively, it goes down and down and down and down, and in the end, it turns to uh, the, the darkness. In the, it 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 goes as down as it becomes civilization of uh, the darkness. And then, what is here interesting about the Mesopotamian idea of the cycle? Is, is that things do not happen gradually, you know, but abruptly, you know, like the, the, the civilization, if it can be called at, at all with such word civilization, uh, I, I would not call it like this, I would call it um, uh, culture or something or society or something. So this culture of darkness is replaced in a moment, in a, in a moment, very abruptly, it is, it is destroyed. Wow, are we right. close to such a point now? No, no. Uh, you see, uh, we are moving towards such a point, but we are far away because um, when this time comes, you know, people will forget about God, about holy books. There, there will be no holy books. There will be no a single Bible, a single Quran, you know, wow. a single Bhagavad Gita on the face of earth. Uh, yeah, people, there, there will be no people praying. You know, it will be a total wild wilderness of greed, hatred, and worse still. So, but, that's, that's not a good <laughs> prediction for the future. <laughs> well, this is this is this is the cycle, you know. Uh, but in this in this big in this big cycle, uh, we can have you know a little ups, a little downs, uh, and uh, as I said, it is not gradual. It is um, there is there there is no way exactly to predict in detail you know uh, how much will go up how much will go down uh, to some extent you know we can see the cycle we can know uh, the nature of the periods every every cycle every cycle is divided in uh, in four big periods sometimes more Something you know, depends, and uh, we can know the nature of these periods, but exactly, it is it is like the the stock market, you know. It's you you know, for example, you can know the the general movement of the gold or of or of some uh, uh, or of the oil or something. You you know the general movement, but you don't know where exactly it will be in a given moment. Mm -hmm. So uh, the civilization does not you know, have a steady progress or steady decline. It's like... Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, <coughs> there is, uh, this will be one of, the, one of the topics because the cycle is actually the 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 doctrine of of the cycle is uh, actually the heart of astrology one one of the f 
foundation principle of ancient astrology. Uh, so there is a perfect cycle, and there is there are another cycles which are which are not perfect, and we must distinguish between between them. You know, a perfect cycle is when it returns to the same position, to the same place. You see, it's uh, deep. <laughs> yeah, from from sunrise to sunrise, this is a perfect cycle. Mm -hmm. Or from spring to spring. But uh, let's say one twelfth of a day is is not a perfect cycle. It is a cycle, but not perfect. Because the day changes length. One day it will be two hours, one day it will be an hour and a half. Yeah, the it, it does not return to uh, the same place. So there are a lot of a lot of topics. I will uh, talk about, as I said, about the uh, the history of astrology and how it evolved, how how it changed, because there is something very important. What we are striving for what we are searching for is the original astrology in the golden era as it was given by god to the first hermes you know whatever god told the first hermes 5500 BC. This is what we are aiming at. That's like the purest knowledge. And the yes. first down ago, the more diluted it's become. Exactly. We our aim in this is to go to the to the source. Where is the pure, pure water? Well, isn't water. that then makes you feel that we're in a period of kind of enlightenment again if we're allowed to get to that knowledge again rather than going down into more darkness yes yes i think i think actually that we are moving to a very different uh, civilization but uh we have about let's say let's i think about 360 years more before we get to that before it becomes more assertive this this new culture actually will start when uh the spring equinox mm -hmm. enters into the fixed babylonian sign of aquarius and which will happen even, after 360 years yes yeah. no there there are some people who claim that the epoch of aquarius has already started well, well it's like dawn the sun doesn't appear all of a sudden you start seeing that it's getting a bit light that it's changing i guess some of those trends and waves are coming already uh but it's not fully here you see you see i'll tell you one thing when the spring equinox entered into the fixed Babylon and Pisces, this this happened somewhere around 200, some yeah around no well 250 years after the birth of Jesus. So Jesus Christ appeared around. 260, 250 years before the change of the spring equinox from Aries to Pisces. So now we're 360 years away, and the logic is the same, right? Okay. Now are the first, the first things that starting to creep in, which will the messengers, yeah. After 360 years, uh, it will come to a full start. 
the new e era. And we will talk about this on the webinar. And I think this new era will will not be so bad. Maybe, yeah, maybe in some respect it it, it may be even you know, better than than uh, than now. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. But well, we've been getting better and better. I'm like, I wouldn't want to live 2,000 years ago, <laughs> to be honest, without internet. Uh, you may you may like it, actually, if, if you go 2,000 years ago. I need my books. I need my... <laughs> you, you have books there. You know, you know what kind of air people breathe then? What kind of bread they right. ate? Right, I don't know. Yeah. What kind of beer they, they drank? Yeah, but they were like... Killing each other in the arenas. Killing each other? No, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This was in, in a given. This was in a given place at a given time. You know, yeah. it was yeah. not all over. Yeah. No, in in the time when they were killing each other in arena in Rome, next to Rome in in ancient Greece, they were still you know going to theater and listening to poetry and music and. And nothing like this, uh, this uh, bad things happening in. Uh, yeah, around. you're right. Don't we're worry about it. Very subjectively, we don't. We're not sure what it was really. So the first part, and there's history. There is uh, ancient history. There is the, the, the mythology. There is the the uh, the whole cosmology. Believe that we, you're going to talk about. And I see that part two and three going to be talking about the different zodiacs because they. There are the fixed Babylonian zodiac. There is also the tropical zodiac as well. Yes. Uh, and and the third part, you're going to be talking about the original 36 constellations, what they are, what it means. You're going to be talking about uh, the meaning of different parts of the, the zodiacal figures according to Hermes. Can you give us an example of what this means? Well, I'll give you one well, very um, picturesque. Example, uh, spicy. <laughs> uh, so, uh, once I had a seminar and I went there a little bit earlier, and there were several people there, which which were my personal students, and we and we started discussing different uh, uh, people and how their charts what what can be seen you know? and one of my students uh, a woman she knew one guy who has come several times at my lectures we actually knew knew him all but she knew him very well for a very long time like i don't know 10 years 20 30 something like this a lot of years and she said to me well i i know this guy very well you know he is very cynical uh hyper hyper hypersexual um he tells uh his uh his language can be very 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 dirty you know he can he can uh, say some very dirty jokes and uh, very bad words and uh, you know uh, and all this very sexual. <laughs> That's like the the worst type of guy. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, and actually, and she said, "Where well, I don't see where does this come from? I cannot get it." And In his horoscope, yeah. From from his horoscope, yeah, from his chart, and and I said, "My God, you know, this is." so simple you know this is uh this is the absolute beginning you know uh of what of how i teach you to look at the chart you know the first thing that you look at is the ascendant and if you look at his ascendant what do you think because i knew his chart by heart by like a photographic memory you know yeah actually uh since I started investigating ancient astrology, and uh, I made this 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 program. 
Placidus. Uh, Roman Placidus. 12 has a program that shows specifically the constellations, specifically for ancient astrology, how the stars and the sky looks. It's the only one of its kind called Placidus, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So uh, after I, I made it, now I will. Okay, where is share screen? Let's see, share screen. I will show you. Okay. The chart of the guy? Uh, or, or the part where his ascendant was falling, yeah. No, this is, this is actually, I will just show you how my program Plus to 7 looks at things. How does it uh, show everything? So this is not uh, his chart. Well, that's uh, this, is, this is Kennedy, Kennedy chart, yeah. But uh, you just have idea that you can see here everything. Here is the Eastern Horizon. You see this? It's not a straight line like we know <laughs> normally. Yeah, this is also because of the projection. You can you can see the horizon and you can see the constellations, how they look. You know, you can see their, uh, so to say, uh, images. And body parts and everything. And everything and stars and everything. So, uh, okay, I knew uh, I knew his chart by a photographic memory, and as I was going to tell you, when I started investigating ancient astrology, after a certain time, I started to memorize. I mean, this was not uh, with my willpower. This happened absolutely naturally. That uh, I started to to memorize the charts of the people like, like a photo in my mind. Be before that, I could not remember any chart. When I was, uh, when I was dealing with this uh, one dimensional- the Tropical, you know, one dimensional. Tropical and only, only this circle and, and the, 12, uh, the 12 signs only and nothing else. You know, uh, I could I could not remember anything, but but now after I started researching uh, ancient astrology, uh, it it was like every chart remained in my head. So his it's chart, pictures. it's whole pictures and stories. And <laughs> yeah, because you can see there everything. You know, you can see the zodiacal uh, figures and uh, the stars and the planets. Are they invisible? Are they visible? And so on. Um, and uh, so because, because this program actually is a very good approximation of the real sky. Mm -hmm. And in ancient astrology, this is very important principle to the real sky. Yeah. The real sky. And maybe maybe people that get on the webinar, we can produce their chart so they can at least have a chart with with this program to look at it while they're learning about the different constellations and things like that. Yeah. We'll oh yeah, yeah, this will this will be fun. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is it is ancient astrology is to look at the sky with your very eyes, and of course you know we cannot go back in time and look at the sky when somebody was born. Was born. But if we have enough practice looking at the sky, uh, when we see the chart of someone in my, in my program, then we can imagine very vividly what it could have been. How it looks like. Anyway, anyway, when she started uh, talking about this guy, his chart immediately immediately popped up in my head and i turned to her and told her look you know this is elementary i am i was telling you so many times the first thing that you that you do when you look at the chart you look at the center and there are several several things that you look at exactly and one of these things it which part of which sign of, of which zodiacal image is on the ascendant. 
And can you guess what is on his ascendant? <laughs> I don't know, but I have an idea. <laughs> this is the 18th degree of fixed areas, which is his penis. penis. <laughs> The penis of the, the penis of, the, of Aries. Of what's, the on his, what's on his eastern horizon? So he can think about his sex. And <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh my God. And that, where does it fall in tropical? So people can think about it. That's somewhere in, in tropical, it's somewhere in, in forest, isn't it? Like 20, 25 from, uh, from the 18. Uh, yeah, 25 plus 18, it would be like 13 from Taurus. Oh, guys, if you have something around 13 degrees in Taurus, <laughs> maybe, you know. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so and you'll be talking about those parts and what they mean, actually. <laughs> yeah. That's a very, very fun part of the webinar. I'm so looking forward to that <laughs> as well. Yeah, so... Uh, there are many, many topics that we will talk about. Uh, as I said, this will be something comprehensive, very, very uh, condensed, because we will not have time to go too much in, in depth. But... Uh, it's still very long, it's five, six hours. Yeah, we'll, I think uh, in the last part, where I hope I'll talk about the Babylonian fixed zodiac, we can uh, we can talk much more details about different stars and different signs and different parts of the science. Yeah. So. And that's going to be just the first of a series of webinars for people that want to learn the ancient ways of the the pictorial way of reading horoscopes, which is actually easier. You see a penis on the ascendant? Of course. <laughs> yeah, you see, yeah. You see an angel's wing on the ascendant? Of course. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And those of you guys who, who get um, on the course, who get the first webinar, I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna produce for you your own charts so you can see how it looks so you keep it. <laughs> so you you send us once we one you when you order just send us your details and uh, we'll try to those of you who who come you know the first 30 people who order because if it's more than 30 it might be a bit hard to do all of this <laughs> but yes the the early birds will get a picture of their zodiac pick of the the right one uh, and there's so much more that is part of the webinar. You, you're talking about the 31 stars that are in nine groups, the stars of wealth, stars of spirituality, of power, of war. Maybe can someone can become a military leader or an uh, artist or knowledge or scientist or someone who is, has secret or sacred knowledge, uh, stars of good luck, stars of bad luck, you know. And uh, you, you, it's part of the webinar is also... The, how to judge the power of the stars and the power in the nature. And there is another interesting topic that I, I'm, I'm, sounds fascinating, the doctrine of the seven divine degrees in the zodiac. Can you quickly mention about that? And then we're going to end this interview. Uh, so we don't take too much time. But can you mention about the doctrine of the seven divine degrees in the zodiac? What is that? This, this is very, very special thing. And uh, it is very, very ancient. It is, it is actually so ancient that even the most ancient writers who, who wrote about these degrees have half forgotten what their basis is. You know, it is, it is something, this doctrine you can find in the uh, Arab astrologers uh, from the Middle Ages. You can find uh, also in uh, in the um, ancient Greek astrologers, you know, who wrote about the time of Jesus Christ. You can find it uh, in this in these authors too, and definitely, it 
it comes directly from uh, Hermes. I am absolutely sure. Who received the full knowledge of astrology in one go, 5,500 years. Yeah. Uh, actually, um, there are several Hermeses. There is legend which tells us that there have been three, three Hermeses. And the last, the last Hermes, I believe, was in the 8th century BC in Babylon. So this is the third Hermes from the uh, 8th century BC in uh, Babylon. The ancient astrology actually uh, comes from him. And he was the guy who restored the, yeah, the 5,000 year old knowledge before that. Yeah, well, yeah before. Uh, Imagine how full it must have been 7,000 years ago. Because as far as I know, they could predict everything <laughs> back then. It and was, how much it cost. <laughs> yeah, it was completely different world. Then uh, there were many people who communicated directly with uh, the stars and with uh, the divinities of the planets. Uh, and actually, to tell you more about these seven degrees, you know, it's a, it's a knowledge which uh, has been misunderstood and hidden for a very long time. And from this, uh, from these seven degrees, you can see also the spiritual level of a given person and and um, you can see also in which of the four winds he has chosen like his spiritual path well because they say you can't really see from the chart how spiritual person how advanced in evolutionary it is and you're saying that actually those seven uh, divine degrees can show if a person how developed they are. Absolutely. Wow. So there is a way to say because everyone from modern astrologers they say, oh, this chart can work this if it's a highly evolved person, but if it's not, it's going to work this way. But there is no way for us to know if it's a highly evolved person or if it's like it, it's not. And those degrees actually indicate that. With with ancient astrology, we are able by the blessing of God to see everything. Wow. Not only uh, the, the psychological makeup, but also the fate. The um, these things in life, you know, which are in the real world, we can we can see also the level of the soul the level of the soul of the spiritual development actually the soul doesn't have a level yeah. I think so. yes yes you're right but uh how pure the heart is uh is uh is shown by those in, seven sacred degrees by the seven sacred degrees yes they they also they also can show um they can show also in which school in which path the person is. Is he in the spiritual path of love or of willpower or of wisdom? Okay, so there are different schools that you come that you can develop spiritually through that your soul comes in each incarnation. There are different schools or there are different Oh yeah, yeah. Paths. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have path of love, for example, Rumi Sufism. Yes. Example of this, the path of love. Yes. Or maybe oh. Mother Teresa path of love. I don't know. She's very yeah. loving. <laughs> I don't know much about Mother Teresa, but I suppose so. Too. But the Sufis are the most direct example, the path of love. Uh, but also, you have, of course, other paths. For example, Zen. Zen is is uh, more the path of the willpower. Yes, they develop willpower through meditation, through focus. 
and, and some people are through knowledge. Basically, they get closer to God, they elevate their soul by studying, by learning. Wisdom, yes. What are the paths, sir, then? Wisdom, love, willpower. Three? Wisdom. Okay, love, willpower, wisdom. And there is uh, the fourth one is uh, uh, it's more connected with the knowledge, but um, it's a different type of knowledge. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk about those degrees and how you can... It is uh, the truth, the truth, yes. The fourth part is ah. the truth. So you have truth, love, Willpower and wisdom. Yes. Wow. And uh, you find from those stars in your horoscope which path you are on and which you should stress on if you want to achieve faster level of spiritual progress. Yes, you can. Uh, but this these seven points are actually something more than stars. It is. It is. We will talk about this when we get to it. Ah, they're not stars, they're part, they're, they're something else, okay. They are not exactly stars. Uh -huh. it is, it is, there is much more depth okay. in, in these seven degrees. Uh, also, you can, you can see with, with these seven degrees, also you can see somebody, if, uh, if you have somebody who can, who, for example, let's see, uh, has been, or, or is from uh, from the dark lodge, from the dark side, like like a, like a person who is spiritually very strong, but is from the dark side, not from the white side. Mm -hmm. You know, which is which are the good guys. Yeah, you can see that. You 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 can see this. Yes. Oh wow. You can you can see if uh, if somebody is in the beginning or is he in some period of testing or you know if if he has uh, as I as I told you if in 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 his karma uh, he has done he has misused his spiritual powers you know, or or if if he has Gain spiritual powers only to dominate in so, this world. Yeah. You can see this by combination of these seven degrees with which planets they are connected. Wow, I can't wait to learn about that. <laughs> this is amazing topic, you know. Maybe maybe we should start the seminar right with these seven degrees. Yes, let's do that. Let's start the seminar with that and then go to the rest. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, we, I'll be super excited about the body parts as well. You know. <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> it is very. I think my ascendant is on the ass of the of the, <laughs> of the what's that called the the Capricorn <laughs> or something. We'll see. <laughs> I'm not sure. I have to check. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much. I'm not. I didn't want to make this interview too long. But it's, it's just, it's fascinating the information you have and it's nowhere else, guys. I mean, have you ever heard that? Have, has anyone even mentioned that to you as knowledge? So we're going to start delving with the first webinar on the 14th of October. We think it is, make sure you check the dates unless there is some changes. But for only $60, guys, this information that is not out there, you can't find it anywhere. Uh, and usually a lecture of rumens cost six hundred dollars for them to go to you know in, in Bulgaria when you do them and he has graciously agreed so we can get bigger number of people you know and more people can understand that ancient knowledge and we'll continue after that going more and more in depth with different new webinars about ancient astrology so within a year hopefully we'll all be able to look at the star and without, you don't need to know any astrology knowledge, guys, to join us at this webinar, do you? You don't need to. It's kind mm -hmm. of starting from the bottom down. So do join us. And I'm looking forward to more interviews with um, 
you, Ruman, you always bring such fascinating information. Also, you can get personal readings with Ruman. Uh, you can check the links below. He also does personal readings for 15, 30, or 60 minutes and hear your story <laughs> and your faith and what organs you have where <laughs> in your horoscope. But thank you so much for being here. And um, yeah, can't wait to see you everyone on the webinar uh, 101 Ancient Astrology. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye. See you soon. Ciao, ciao.